hello viewers today we are gonna discuss the main ideas of our 12th topic of the idea builders our today's topic is government surely these ideas will give you a very good insight into the topic and will help you to write or speak better in IELTS examination to have clear ideas about this topic please watch the video to the end let's get started this is the 12th topic of our idea builders under this main topic, we will cover some subtopics. Our today's subtopics include censorship, media censorship, surveillance camera, mobile phones in public places, subsidy given to artists by government. So at the very beginning, we will start with our first subtopic and that is censorship imposed by government. So censorship has got some positive aspects. At the very beginning, we can state that censorship can protect children from unhealthy content. Censorship can reduce the amount of conflict that is in society. It exists not to curtail the freedom of the people but to protect them. It can maximize risks in national security. It prevents the arising of too much violence which can pollute the minds of individuals. It can help parents to rearing their children despite their busy schedules. It prevents certain groups, religious sectors and people from getting offended. Censorship protects the rights of artists, innovators and inventors. Censorship provides us with a vehicle to stop false content. Censorship can limit the impact of identity theft. Censorship can reduce the impact of hate speech in society. Censorship gives us the opportunity to stop this hate before it can get started. And at the end, we can tell that censorship can provide another level of security to country's profile. So surely censorship has got so many positive aspects. Now we'll move to negative aspects of censorship. At the very beginning, we can tell that censorship overtly deprives the public of information related to political and social issues. It clearly, it is pro-dictatorship. There are loopholes in enforcement of censorship which makes it ineffective. Censorship stops people from pursuing career opportunities. It reduces the overall intelligence of the general public. Censorship prevents an individual from expressing themselves freely. It shifts where the responsibility of consumption is in society. Censorship creates an adverse impact on the economy at all levels. It allows a false narrative to become the truth. Censorship keeps people away from progress and development. Censorship represses one group of people in favor for what the majority wants. It allows people to create a specific narrative in society to call it truth. It is expensive to be engaged in the practice of censorship. And at the end, we can tell censorship creates repression so that it encourages is compliance. Now, we'll have some opinions about censorship. At the very beginning, we can tell that Censorship is a powerful tool that can work for or against society and the people. It can be beneficial in some aspects, but can also be potentially harmful if used improperly. It can either result to dis disseminating balanced information or marks the truth about issues people deserve to know. And at the end we can tell we should try to achieve a kind of censorship that will work for the majority of the people in the society. 
now we will move to our next topic that is media censorship. Media censorship has got some positive aspects. At the very beginning, we can say that media censorship is the act of monitoring information. It determines if information should be broadcast, published or televised. Censorship help control undesirable content. It improves security and the protection of sensitive information. Media censorship keeps facts straightened. It protects a person's privacy. Media censorship helps to avoid the release of information that can affect a nation's security. It protects children from extremely violent and sexual material. Media censorship limits advertisements that can be harmful for the people. And it helps control hate in the society. It helps protect the security of the society. Now we will move to our next next subtopic that is the cons of media censorship media censorship has got some negative aspects we can tell that it violates freedom of expression it encourages ignorance it promotes manipulation for personal gain it limits education and awareness. It can insulate society and make people different. Censorship takes away the freedom of speech. Censorship leads to government funded and controlled broadcast. Now we will move to our next subtopic of the day and that is surveillance camera in the public places. So setting up surveillance camera at public places has got some positive respect. At the very beginning, we will see some pros of surveillance camera. Public video surveillance improves public safety. Public surveillance cameras reduce crime rate. The authorities could build databases with our pictures and identities. Public video surveillance helps catch the criminals. Video cameras in public locations provide evidence and gather clues. Public video surveillance brings convenience for everyday life. Perhaps the most obvious benefit of installing cameras in public places is enhanced safety. When crimes are committed, video cameras with recording capabilities can provide valuable evidence to law enforcement and prosecutors. Some municipalities do use video cameras to catch divers who run red lights and to monitor the flow of traffic in congested areas. Security cameras can also lower insurance cost of homeowners and business. There is not a lot of large scale data about the effectiveness of security cameras in public places, but some smaller scale data collection has shown that these cameras lower crime rates and are effectively in their areas. The use of CCTV is becoming widespread nowadays. And at the end, we can tell video cameras installed in many public places are supposed to protect us and deter the criminals. So, it has got some negative aspect as well as. So, now we will discuss the negative aspect of setting up surveillance camera in public places. At the very beginning, we can tell that while there are advantages of CCTV, there are many disadvantages as well. Surveillance systems are easily abused. Effectiveness of a public security camera is doubted. Public camera surveillance is really expensive. Security cameras monitoring public areas can appear to some as an invasion of privacy. 
it can cost a lot of money to install security cameras, monitors and related equipments in public area. In some cases, it can be difficult to prove that a security camera is an effective tool for deterring or preventing criminal activity. Many people think that this surveillance violates our privacy. Like many other forms of technology, security cameras can be hacked. This poses a serious threat to public safety. Criminals can access the cameras to use for their own benefit. And at the end, we can tell that we should not be treated like criminals. Our next subtopic is mobile phone in public places. Some people think that they should be banned in public places and there are some arguments. The arguments are as follows. Phones can be intrusive, uninvited noise to others. Phones can disturb others when they are concentrating for example, in library. They are antisocial as people are too busy sending messages to talk to the people in front of them. The signal can cause problems in some public places such as hospitals by interfering with delicate instruments or equipments. In some public places such as libraries, music halls or galleries, phones can annoy and ruin the experience for others. Now, we will look at some arguments against mobile phones in public places. Some people think that mobile phone should not be banned in public places. They have got following arguments. Mobiles do not need to be intrusive as they can easily be tuned, turned into silent or vibrate. Phones can be useful in case of emergencies, for instance, accidents in public places. Phones can provide entertainment when traveling on tedious journeys, particularly on public transport. Phones are multifunctional and can be used as recording devices or cameras, so shouldn't be banned in public. They are useful for families overseas to get in touch with each other. And mobile phones provide a safety for youngsters as parents can easily get in touch with them whenever, wherever they are. Now we will move to our next subtopic of the day that is subsidy given to the artist. At first we will look at some key ideas of this topic. At the very beginning we can tell that Artists could easily collect reasonable income to bring forth remarkable creations. This readily available fund would encourage the talents to bring out the best in them. Supporting talents financially seem more likely to be effective rationally than the former. Government support is vital to artists and their projects. Perhaps by considering the proportion of artists are living in poverty. Government should allocate some budget for amateur artists as they bring benefit for individuals and communities. Artists who have achieved success in their fields are also to support themselves. Many amateur painters have painted some of the public areas and they have changed the look and the atmosphere of these places. Some talented artists have made artistic sculpture and placed them in public areas which have become more beautiful and attractive. Many amateur musicians have entertained the public with their music. Artists bring benefits for the society and the government should subsidize them. Artists are struggling for life and some of them even living below the poverty line. Without financial funding by government, our cities would be much less interesting and attractive. These artists are capable of gaining financial support in a number of ways. Art activities are not the basic of human beings and government should 
focus on more important matters. Creative artists should seek sponsorship from private institu institutions or private companies. Funding the artist enhances remarkable achievements not only to the artist but also to the government. And at the end, we can tell that the artist should seek a sponsorship from other resources as most of the cases they can't afford to continue this job without having help from the government or other sources. The main ideas related with our today's topic, surely these ideas will help you to get better preparation for your IELTS examination. Hope you will watch our upcoming videos and get updated with ideas necessary for your IELTS examination. If you like this video, please like, share, comment and subscribe to my channel. You can like the channel on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.